Andrews Live. The podcast with your host, Randy Andrews. On this podcast, we're all about the music and the stories. Each episode, Randy takes different music tracks and puts them to the stories and events of our everyday lives. It's like building a soundtrack to your life and then rock out to it. But it's not just about the tunes. We also bring out guests to share their stories, and we'll give you a behind-the-scenes look into the life of a full-time entertainer. From the sold-out shows to the green rooms, we're here to take you on a wild ride. So grab your headphones and get ready to jam. Here's your host, Randy Andrews. Randy Andrews. How's it going, everyone? This is Randrews Live, the podcast, and I'm Randy Andrews. With me today is a very special guest, singer, songwriter, stronger, singer and songwriter, and mom extraordinaire, Carolee Garrison. Carolee, how's Hello. it going? Hello. Good, good. How are you? I'm doing phenomenal. It's uh, it's not too bad. It's nice and warm here in my uh, my little studio. Not so much outside, but it's uh, I'm hanging in there. Awesome. Nice. All right, so uh, if you want to just give us a quick little bio, quick rundown, who you are, what you're about, you know, your your life story in uh, 250 <laughs> characters or less. <laughs> right, so my life story is not exactly like a quick bio. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, I actually went to college to sing opera. Um, it was like my life. I wanted to sing forever. And then I auditioned for the School of Music and Opera, and I didn't get in. And it completely devastated me and I was like how am I ever gonna move on from this but also that same semester I met and married my husband in seven weeks at 18. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a little bit crazy at 18 um, and now we're 14 years into our marriage so it, it worked out um, but we you know quickly had kids and it got to the point where I was like I don't know how this is possible anymore how is this music dream that I've had my entire life even possible now that I have kids and nothing went the way that I hoped that it would. Um, all three of my kids are special needs and they all have autism and one of them is also a type 1 diabetic and then on top of that um, my husband who actually is also an opera singer uh, was disabled for about a decade of our marriage and so I was his caretaker and I was caring for our kids and I was like this looks impossible. Like, how do I, how do I sing? How do I perform? How do I get out of my house and get to do, you know, anything that I actually want for my life? Uh, and so I tried really hard for a long time and I'd perform on little stages and I would try to write little things. But the thing was, is that I'm a singer and I've been studying vocals forever, but I don't actually play any instruments. Um, I'm terrible with technology um and it was like i don't know how this is possible for me and so i we, we went on and eventually i actually uh, we had left college uh and then we came back and i auditioned for the school of music and opera again a decade later <laughs> it took me about 12 <laughs> years to get my degree it was crazy yeah. uh and i came back and i auditioned for the school of music again and i was like this is it this is the reason my life's been so hard this is gonna be what makes all of it worth it and then I didn't get in and it was really close. I mean, they let like four people in, like it's like really, really tight. Right. Um, so I had made it through all the levels and then I was just crushed yep. when I didn't get in. So it turns out I actually don't like listening to opera. So I'm not going to give you any <laughs> opera songs to play on this. It's just right. really, really fun to sing. Um, <laughs> And I had I had been a songwriter back in like middle school, but I was like, I can't do that. I'm not, I don't have the skills for that. And so when I sure. didn't get into the school of music and I was just crushed, I mean, after like six months of like not being able to sing without crying, <laughs> I decided to give the songwriting thing another shot. Yeah. And I took this songwriting class. And the, it, was, it was a terrible class, but because I took the class and I'm a super type A motivated kind of person, I got a Mac so that I could get GarageBand and so I could start, I have a teensy bit of piano. Okay. So I, I know notes. I didn't know any chords. I didn't know any of the things. I just knew piano notes. And so I started with simple garage band on Mac and putting notes in and, and writing all stuff. I didn't know. Oh my gosh. I didn't know anything. Look, looking back now, I'm like, 
I really <laughs> like go do nothing. And my professor said to me, um, he was kind of a total douche. <laughs> he was like, just because you're a good singer doesn't mean you're a good songwriter. Sure. And I was like, okay, so I, I don't fit into opera. They don't want me there. And apparently I don't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Give me a song writer because they don't like me. So <laughs> right, and it was, yeah. it was just, you know, people say things to you, and they kind of like crush your soul a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and then you have to figure out how to pick yourself back up, right, and and keep going. And so I actually had this kind of, I, I ran into this coach online and started this program called Soul Sound Academy. And then during that program, I learned chords. I learned how to stop writing songs that were, I, I wanted everyone to be happy. <laughs> I wanted only <laughs> happy songs. These are all yeah. uplifting. These are all optimistic. And they were all garbage and fake. And none of it was like real, right? right. And, and, we, and so none of it felt genuine. None of it felt like, it's just, and, and what was funny is that uh, my husband, who's also recently realized that he's on the autism spectrum, he's very blunt. He's very honest with me. And so he'd gotcha. be like, you know, your songs are just, I don't love them. They're <laughs> just, they're really cliche. I think you can do better. And so every time I would come to him and I'd be like, look at this song I wrote, he'd be like, you know. Yep. Yeah. And so <laughs> I learned how to stop forcing um songs that were cliche and fake i learned how to start writing songs that were real and deep uh, my second single i released is called apathy and it's a love song to apathy okay nice <laughs> and i wrote that in the middle of i think i was sitting in my kitchen crying because my kids were you know there's this thing about being a mom that people don't realize it's it's very unfair especially when you have special needs kids. They break everything you own. <laughs> um, they hurt you in so many ways because they you know, are learning and they don't understand how their behavior affects other people. Yeah. But being a mom is a sacrifice in a way of like, they are doing things that hurt you to the core and there is no justification. There is no revenge you're their mom and so you have to love them anyway and so you right. get you you get no you know there's there's nothing you just have to suck up all of this unfairness and move on and so when i was sitting in that moment i was like what i really what, what's really helping me get through this is apathy sure. and so i wrote this song that goes uh dear apathy are you in love with me <laughs> <laughs> and it's this really um fun kind of play on words but it is lacking um, the structure of what I thought a good song was supposed to be. Because sure. I was all about like, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is what everyone wants. And it turns out music can be whatever you feel. Music yeah. can be whatever you want. And that right. was so freeing for me to learn. So I was really blessed to be in this class where I, I wrote these songs. And what would happen is um, I would write a melody and I'd write lyrics. But I had absolutely zero sense of like timing <laughs> or okay. and I had zero idea like chords. So I, I learned how to uh, put chords to the melodies I had written and how to, you know, actually make this make sense in any sort of time signature. And what's funny is um, apathy being one of the first ones that I wrote is in the funkiest time signature you will ever hear. I can't even tell you what it is. It's like 713 or something and then it switches. Wow, okay. it is, yeah, it's like ridiculous because I'd write these really crazy complicated melodies right. and I wouldn't be able to explain technically what I had done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so... Along this, this process, um, as I was deep diving into myself and like learning how to be still and like meditate and be introspective and, and just like feel things, um, it, you get a lot more inspiration than just for music. I got tons of inspiration for music, but I also felt super inspired to start my podcast, uh, yeah. which my very first single that I wrote was for my podcast. Uh, my podcast is called Seeking Sunshine, and I had this idea for the podcast in, in that I um, we talk about finding the positive in the trials of life because I was going, how do I take you know my decades of experience of 
lots of trials, <laughs> lots of overcoming, right. lots of stuff. How do I take my own personal story and use that to help other people? And the way that I do that is I listen to other people's really hard stories. And we talk about how did you get through? How did you find positive? And so when I first started my podcast, I started with a demo of my single, Seeking Sunshine. And then as I finished the song and, and got closer to a finished version and, you know, learned things like EQ and learned how to, because I during this whole like year long process, I learned how to produce my own music. Nice. Which was which was really amazing for me because I thought that it was something I couldn't do. I thought that yeah. All right, so that's awesome. The uh jumping in back and forth with uh you know the the struggles and and, and being an entertainer also will um you, you hear people it's it's a constant nope nope not interested don't want you oh we could have done better mm, not my thing it just yeah. it wears on you time and time and time again and to be able to not only push through that for yourself and to not give up on your dream of singing opera which turns out wasn't really a dream maybe a daydream but it kind of so, yeah well sorry just to i didn't elaborate on this before and i should have um i actually was like really chubby as a kid and i was chubby for i was i was a big girl for a really really long time sure. i actually had uh gastric sleeve surgery two years ago so i'm about 100 pounds down and the reason that i pursued opera is because i didn't think anybody would let me on their stage because i was fat and yeah. so that was that was why i pursued opera it wasn't because i wanted to be an opera singer it was because i thought that was my only option as a and, and honestly, that uh, that image that that's portrayed out there that you have to look a certain way, you have to be like for me, I, I got into comedy hypnosis and comedy just in general because I'm naturally a bigger guy and bigger guys seem to be funny. You know, I'm not I'm not a Calvin Klein model. I'm not going to be standing out there out of Abercrombie and Fitch with my shirt off unless, you know, I spilled some uh, some, some cheese dip on it from a pretzel at the mall. That's not really <laughs> me, but. Uh, but no, I, I I completely get that. I understand. You know, I when I grew up, I a lot of people don't really talk about the the body issues, the body dysphoria that, that starts forming in your head, that also leads down to well, I can't, I don't look this way, so now I need to go into this profession because I feel like I fit that profession better. And it's one of those things that I think nowadays it's becoming more and more prevalent out there with conversations that people are taking that time, taking having those conversations. Um, now I've got three daughters at home. And I just, whatever they want to do, I'm cool with. I'm going to back them up on, well, almost anything. You know, if they want, if they want to do something <laughs> that's not good, I'm going to say, hey, maybe we'll think twice about this. But, but you know, to have them look and act a certain way just to fit the mold of what has been, um, I think from what I hear, and I'm going to be listening to music too here because I, I love the stories behind that. But I think by you having those weird time signatures in your songs, and putting the you know your your lyrics out there, if they're, um, they're heartfelt. Like you're breaking that own your own mold or the the mold of society of the music, which makes it stand out, which makes it better. And you're going to be able to reach people on that deeper level because you never know how those lyrics can hit with someone. So, it's no, true. That's awesome. It's so true. And you know, it's so funny. Is I just had this experience the other day. We, we've been working so hard on changing our preconceived notions and recognizing them and and changing. Yeah that and we went to this new year's eve kid event and they had a magician and there was this woman walking around getting her thing set up and i didn't realize until she went and got on stage and started her show that this entire time i had been thinking she was his assistant and that she couldn't be the magician because she was a girl and i was just like oh my gosh i had no idea yep that in my head magicians are men I didn't even and it was like mind blowing and she was so great and it was such a cute show and I was like, whoa, yeah. I have, you know, I'll even still have so much work to do to change these things. So so with my profession, with uh, being out there as a comedy hypnotist, there's there's few female hypnotists that are out there. But one thing that I, that I learned from the kind of from the get go, I had a mentor. I was actually training a female hypnotist at the same time. And he said he's, he wanted to partner both of us, both of us on stage together because he said, Believe it or not, the people you have on stage, they're going to listen to you differently. 
if you have someone that had a strong father figure in their life or a strong male role model, they're going to listen to you better. If they had a, a strong female role model, a strong female presence in their life, they're going to listen to the female hypnotist better. So they want to pair both of us up so we could just so we can demonstrate that demographic yeah. change for us. But yeah, the uh, the roles are kind of changing out there. You know, I when you think, you know, when I, anytime you do a, a quick search for hypnotist, it's going to be a guy that pops up nine times out of ten. Uh, same thing, magician uh, and DJs too. my oldest daughter. She uh, I was a wedding DJ for 15 plus years and she would come out to a few gigs with me, you know, family wedding, whatever. And she would see me do it. Well, now she wants to pursue music as a career. Um, she doesn't want to do uh, songwriting. She said, I want to be a DJ. I want to be on stage. Cool. I said, yeah, awesome. And then she's starting to find her voice, too. And my other daughter, she's my my middle child. She's a, a spitfire. She loves to sing and dance. So I could see her getting the music theater. And then my youngest one, she's three. She she does what she wants when she wants. And we can't stop her. But <laughs> No, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Good for you kind of, you know, re reaching out, breaking that mold and, you know, doing your part. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a process. And it's like, I also, I did have done a lot of musical theater. And I, because of my opera training, I don't fit. Opera is very different from modern musical theater. Yeah. Very different style. It's a very different, like, way to sing. And so what I have found is I've auditioned for so many shows is that they don't want me there either because <laughs> yep. I don't have that same sound that they're looking for. And so actually what I ended up studying in college was costume design so that okay. I could still like be around that theater because I just love that creativity. Yeah. And now I'm going, you know, is that even, that's not really where I want to be at. I want to be backstage. I want to be on stage. I want to be like front right. and center and doing it, you know, and yeah, changing the mold changing the way that we look at how we thought our lives were supposed to go and being open which okay, sorry this opens me up to a, another song i wrote yeah, yeah <laughs> um, definitely it's uh called wait and this one i, I love I, I have a deep love for all of the songs <laughs> that i've written but That's a good wait, thing. um my, my husband like i said he's been disabled for the last decade and that's been a, a combination of physical disabilities and mental disabilities and uh he struggles with a lot of mental illness um suicidal ideation and anxiety and depression and all that and yeah this song saved him it's so so funny i have to get into the story for one second i was in that yeah. songwriting class a couple years ago and my cousin my distant cousin who i didn't know super well actually committed suicide and it was and it was very sad um she wasn't like a huge part of my life, so it wasn't like life altering for me. But in that moment, right. I was like, I want to write a song that will help people with this. Like I desperately like wanted to force this song <laughs> to happen. And I wrote this song and it just, it just wasn't good. It just wasn't good. I tried so hard to force this song that would help save people from, from suicide. And, and I couldn't force it. Yep. And that, that's kind of been my big lesson of the last few years as I've gone through this journey is that especially with writing music is you just have to like let it come. Yeah. You cannot force it. And so this song called Wait, I actually didn't write it for that reason. I wrote it about me and okay. what I was going through. Um, <laughs> We I was hoping that, that the lyrics were on here and I could just like remember what all the words were because it's been like a year since I had <laughs> this song. But the sure. words are, um, I know you want to quit because you feel like a fool and nothing's going right and it's just like, don't give up just yet, wait. Um, maybe things don't have to look the way they thought, the way you thought they did. Maybe you can still change the world. Maybe it's just going to look a little bit different. Okay. Um, and and what I wrote that song for was for me and my music and yeah. my life because I don't have the ability to go tour because I've got three kids with autism. You know, I have to be mom. I have to be their support system. I have to be here for them. You know, I have to yeah. be that stable one. I can't go perform at nights because they would freak out, you know, they, they expect <laughs> right. me to be here. Um, and so it's finding a way to 
make music, but in a different way than has been done before. Producing it myself from home and releasing it myself and learning how to do all these things I never thought I could do. Right. And maybe it's going to look different, but don't give up on it yet. And so when I was writing the song and I was working through all the words and I had just gotten it kind of, you know, figured out as far as the lyrics went and I sang it to my husband and he just kind of sat there and cried for a while <laughs> Nice. because it had different meaning to him than it did to me. Oh yeah. It was so, you know, it was genuine and it was not all just, you know, sunshine and rainbows, <laughs> um, but right. it had the meaning for him that he needed in the moment. And that's what, you know, that, isn't that what all of us want from our music is to be able to oh, yeah. deeply touch people in a way that will change their lives and help lift them. And it turns out that that doesn't come from fake positivity. It comes from sharing those deepest, darkest, saddest emotions and times and experiences yeah. and then putting that to words and then letting people take their own meanings from it. Well, and that kind of, you know, you hit on something there. I, I always talk about, you know, lyrics are going to hit different for everybody that, that's involved with it, whether it's, you know, I could be sitting here listening to it and I could be in a great mood one day and then the next day I listen to the same song and it's going to hit me just a little different because of the emotions that I'm that are going through me on that day or maybe an incident that happened. And I, I honestly, I think the title of the song, Wait, that right there throws out that it, rather than trying to force something, because you, know, you said you're trying to write that song for, you know, helping people through, don't, don't do, don't end what you have going Wow. Um, which there's a lot of that going on anymore. And it's, it's sad to see across the news and, uh, but to sit there and just wait and let, allow the inspiration to come to you and allow things to happen for a reason. And I think that right there, um, that that's a, a powerful message just, just in the title alone. And then the song behind it, it's to have that kind of impact. You know, were you expecting that impact? Um, on your no, husband? I, you know, I really wasn't because again, I had written it about, my music and I was feeling so yeah. sad that I didn't feel like it was going anywhere <laughs> and just a you know a message to myself really of like right. don't give up there's still time you know I'm 32 and so a lot of people who are you know trying to do music go oh you know 30 that's it you're done that's too old to yep. like start any sort of music career um, and but there's still time and there, there aren't a lot, but there are people who have done this yeah. at every age. You know, there's still time. And if you can pause and instead of giving into all the despair, just hold out hope for the future. Yeah. No, that's. So you mentioned that you, you, you pretty much are doing everything at home right now. You yeah. Know, so. Producing and, and kind of getting everything just all, all self published correct yeah so i've got a home studio in my basement um i record everything i record harmonies and i go through and do all the production and all the instrumentalists um so everything that is released right now is all me <laughs> so, so i did all of it um however i actually was gonna release my originals album last september okay and i wrote this song that no one's heard because it's not out as a single uh, and it's called I keep fighting and it goes I keep fighting but I just can't win and the blows keep coming again and again and again okay <laughs> um, and it's and it was just like I, and I finished this song and I felt incredible about it and I and I went to play it for my husband and I'm just going this is the greatest I've ever written you <laughs> have to hear this song um, and I played it for him in the car and he looked at me and he was like, you can't release this. This is so good that it deserves live instruments behind it. Okay. You nice. Wait to release your album until you can collaborate. Cause I'm doing everything on GarageBand. I don't actually play like any instruments, right? This is all MIDI. Uh, right. And so he's going, you, you should get some live instruments with this. It deserves it. 
And so it was actually within a, a week or two of that that I stumbled across a friend of, well, my parents, friends, kid. Um, they had shared um, their child's, their child, their child's like 30 <laughs> or 40s. But I knew, I knew the parents of this person. Um, and uh, he, he shared his instrumental um, ska piece, which my music, I, I kind of consider my music like... Um, theatrical pop <laughs> it's not it's not really <laughs> uh, um, but so he had released his song and his dad was promoting it on facebook and i was like oh i'm gonna go promote you know another artist because because i want people to promote me so i'm gonna promote let's 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 spread the love right and so yeah. i went on to his band camp page and i bought his song for a few bucks um it's not super my style but it was it was cool he and then he reached out to me and he was like I can like thank you so much for buying my song and supporting me and I listened to some of your music and I could how he he plays like 20 instruments like this guy wow. he's incredible he plays tons of instruments and he was like I can help you and so we're going through every song on my album and redoing all of them with live <laughs> instrumentals oh, that's awesome so all five of those singles that are out right now they're all getting a makeover and if you want a, a sample of that, um, it's not finalized yet, but the version he did of Seeking Sunshine, which knocked my socks off, by the way, uh, is the intro for my podcast. So it hasn't, it's not released everywhere, but you can hear the difference between the single, Seeking Sunshine, and the, the version that will be on the album in the next few months is the opener for my podcast. So you can hear the, the difference that his live oh. instrumentals make and like you when you listen to the original seeking sunshine it's it's amazing i love it it's one of my favorite songs it's very jazzy and and peppy and it's it's amazing but yep. then you hear his version with the live instruments and the difference is phenomenal <laughs> like the difference just blows me away so he's <laughs> he's going through all my songs and and recording all the live instruments um and it's it's gonna be incredible. So I'm really looking forward to this album coming out. I'm hoping February, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, you'll have to let me know when uh, when it comes out, and I'll I'll plug away and I'll do what I can yeah. to get it. some more notoriety. Absolutely. And well, I will listen to it too. Yeah. What's what's really fun, I guess I should mention, is that um, my album is almost indefinable as far as style goes because my songs are actually wildly different styles and. There was a point when I was like, what am I supposed to do? I want to sing lots of different styles. Oh, yeah. Do sure. I do, you know, one that's churchy and one that's um, theatrical and one that's rock and one that's jazz and one. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I have a, uh, my, my, I don't know, my third single uh, is called Precipice. Uh, okay. And it's very much rock. Like I, I've always envisioned it as like a video game background. Um, and it's a really fun, upbeat, like, like it's definitely like a rock. <laughs> and then Seeking Sunshine's uh, much more jazzy. Um, weight is more, um, it's not acoustic, but it's much more singer songwriter y, like, like a slower pop kind of song. Um, trying to think of the other ones i have i have a song that also is not released yet called this is hard uh okay. which my husband was like you need to change that title <laughs> but i'm not uh and it's it's an angry letter to god and okay. it's like this life's really hard and i don't feel you near me some all the time and what the heck <laughs> and so i have this uh this this very you know kind of religious angry letter to god song in there that's totally different from my rock and roll piece and my jazz piece <laughs> and my different styles in there so yeah it, it's nothing sounds the same and then i have this other one that's also not released called the storm that's that's i'm the storm i'm the thunder i'm the lightning and it's a definite feminine power song and it's oh, sure very musical theater <laughs> nice. rain sounds and the thunder and so there's there's quite a variety in there and I feel like that reflects me and my life and it's like I love all of these things and I want to show all these parts of myself. Yeah. Well, honestly, those are 
those are the best uh, types of sing- singer songwriters that I love. That you have that variety. You don't get pigeonholed in one genre and just have to keep cranking out hit after or tune after tune after tune. Then might not all be hits, but you get that freedom. And I think as an artist and having that creativity kind of flow through you, you want to have that that creative freedom. That you know maybe to them feeling like a gospel song. Maybe they want to kick it. I want to go some uh, 1920s jazz era. I'm going to throw out uh, you know punk pop. You know you have that freedom that. If that's what you're feeling at the time, that's how the lyrics came out, and that's what inspired you, you go for it. There's a, I'm going to throw a few bands your way. Yeah. Uh, or I should say one band and one artist, because I think there's one artist that um, that I think you would kind of absolutely love, just the way he's doing things, because he's doing things a little different. Um, I was on a live stream with him um, and a couple other marketers. Uh, his name is Coffee Anderson, and he decided he had a couple of uh, opportunities to get picked up by record labels and wow. he said no because they were going to say you have to do it this way you have to release this single instead of that single and he's like well i like this one better i want to write this song so he made it a point that he was going to go out and he was going to do everything himself you know he's got a band and he so he's not doing everything himself but as far as producing and releasing and marketing um it's all him but he had a song that kind of it got there's a song that got big on TikTok. It was Mr. Red, White, and Blue when that was going around. That was one of his songs. But he's got he had a, a country song that came out that sampled Eiffel 65's Blue. And it's he's singing about Bud Light and a girl's eyes. And it's like, I dig it. I like the song. I, I <laughs> love the callback reference. So Coffee Anderson's a great one that I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't hurt reaching out. Say, hey, how are you doing this? Can you help me? Like, this yeah. is what I don't want to do. What everyone else is doing. But as far as stylistically, there's a band out there that the more you're talking with your style of music and what you're coming out with, and how you can't really be pigeonholed. There's a Canadian uh, punk rock pop band called Mariana's Trench, and they have they have I think four albums out right now. The first one is like hardcore like 80s early 90s style garage band punk pop like and and then the next one i believe is called ever after and it's kind of theatrical what's really nice with that band is you put the album on from start to finish you just go straight through and it's all linear like each song kind of intertwines each other it's a Um, story yeah it's a it's it's an experience there's a the next album they have is uh find it real quick it's there's ever after and then oh i'm drawing a blank on this one but i'm looking it up real quick masterpiece theater um sorry masterpiece theater came out first and masterpiece theater is that theatrical one ever mm-hmm. after does the same thing but what they do for the intro song and the outro song they take um, lyrics from each song and they intertwine those into the intro song and the outro um so it's kind of like if you don't want to listen to the whole album you go to the last track and you could say oh okay so i really like that you could find it um and then they switched genres up completely so that was more kind of your big theatrical and there's some punk pop there's some more poppy stuff their uh their next album after that that came out was called astoria and when i when i first heard astoria he's got a a song on there it's him, a ukulele, and then halfway through, there's some strings that come in. Cool, but it's mostly a cappella. Yeah, so so that song is, is it, it's it's ukulele, it's some strings at the back end, and then you, I, he flips the script, and there's uh, remnants of, of like the Jackson Five era, <laughs> old school, uh, you know, Motown, um, and then they throw in their traditional sounds of uh, you know your punk pop, awesome. but but that band, I think if you're if you're ever just Look at yeah, I'm gonna go look them up. I wrote them all down. <laughs> yeah, the uh, and so the fun part is, and I, I did a lot of I, I love the story behind music and how it all comes out. The lead singer for the group is Josh Ramsey, and he uh fell away from music, he you know got hooked on drugs, and then he realized I don't want that, I want to go back to the music. So he came back to it, and the first hit song that he wrote was Call Me Maybe that Carly Ray uh, Yeah. So he wrote that, he sold it, and it kind of, he took off from there. He's like, I'm never going to write a song that big anymore. Um, they do have one song that I'll share. This is going to be a little bonus context. I'm going to plug all your music with this. But 
Um, <laughs> one that I think you'll get a kick out of is uh, it's Mariana's Trench and it's Pop Music 101. <laughs> and they basically, he goes through. Yeah, I wonder if I heard that. Yeah, I he, he goes through and he just says, hey, this is you know, what pop music is supposed to be. And they kind of he takes jabs at he takes jabs at himself with uh, you know writing call me maybe he wrote he takes jabs at Mumford and Sons like hey, you sound like this and uh, I think at the very end if I remember correctly he uh, he does a little beatboxing but it's just boots and cats and boots and cats <laughs> and then at the very the very last uh, uh, lyrics that he sings that kind of they fade out uh, it's the uh, Jason Derulo but it's just <laughs> sure, well, Ramsey, and it, it, that's nice. how the song ends. So it, it takes a stab at, at pop music and how everything is sounding the same anymore. And we need that variety in our life. We need something different out there. Our emotions are everywhere. We want something yeah. to match that those emotions. Yeah, and if you like a band, if you like an artist, and they they have a certain style of music, but they branch off into something new, I'm sorry, I'm going to go for it because if I already know you're putting out good stuff, I might be like, ooh. That was a business business decision there, I and mean, uh, maybe you need a new advisor. I didn't really care for that, but they did it, and that's their thing. So, yep. Well, awesome. you were saying uh, acapella. Acapella is my favorite, and I think if I. Yeah. If I ever had like a dream career, I, I could just go sing a cappella all the time. Nope. Like that would be my favorite. And that's actually, um, I uh, did my Christmas album in like two weeks. Uh, right. <laughs> I had been thinking about it throughout the year, and I had recorded a little bit. Um, but what I, but I really didn't like get my nose to the grindstone for about two weeks before sure. uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> I released it. <laughs> but the way that I recorded it is by just walked in and recorded everything a cappella. I didn't have any notes or nice. I didn't play, I didn't choose a key till after I had sung everything. And then I was like, I wonder what key I sang that in. Let's figure that out. Cause I, right. And then I put chords to whatever I had sung. And thankfully I was almost entirely in tune. <laughs> That's good. That's a plus. I think there was one song where I went out of key and then I just didn't use it. But uh, like, I love acapella. I think that's, oh, yeah. that's my favorite way to sing. Cause it's just the purest you know, emotion to share it just like that. And see, I, I think that my favorite concert I've ever, I ever went to was, uh, was Rockapella. They are the ones who originally sang the Carmen San Diego theme song back in the nineties. Um, we went, I, I had an opportunity to see them. They were performing at a little, uh, college nearby. My wife and I, we bought tickets and we went and, it's four guys and a microphone, and then they they have their vocal percussionist. Yeah. He had a handheld microphone, and then he showed they had little uh, lavalier mics. They were taped about every three inches from the top of his neck all the way down to his stomach. They oh. came out. They did uh, Carmen San Diego theme song, and then from there, uh, he they said, uh, "Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Thatcher on drums," and he did a five minute beatbox solo. And he kept changing genres that you know he was beating, uh, mixing to. And he took the vocal mic away from his mouth, the handheld, and he did a drum roll. From here, he pulled it away, and you could hear it wow. roll down his, down his throat to his stomach and then back up. And then he picked back up with some cymbals, and then the band all came out after that. But That's amazing. Yeah, that, was the, that was the best concert, because it's, it's all music that we know already, but it's their creative take on it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... That's amazing. Nice. So I've got four of the five songs that you have. All right. I, I may as well throw the last one in there, which I, was, in there. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. So I had this, I was in this class and my uh, coach was going, okay, I want you guys to pick something and write about it. And I don't know why I ended up here. Uh, this song's called Roller Coaster. I hate roller coasters. I hate okay. them. I hate it. I hate it so much. I don't want to be swung around and feel like I have no control. I definitely want yeah. that control in my life. And so I was like, oh my gosh, what a great metaphor <laughs> for my life. And so I wrote this song called Roller Coaster. And it's all about I'm being forced on this roller coaster in my life. And it's just forcing me up and down. And I feel like I'm being swung everywhere. And I hate it. And then at the very end, um, it's like, 
it, what's fun about that song is it builds. It starts off slow and then every verse, it just builds and builds and builds until you have this ending. Well, it's sort of like right before the end where it's sure. it's almost like when I played it for my husband and he's got, you know, his anxiety and his PTSD, he was like, no, this is so <laughs> overwhelming. And I was like, that's the point. <laughs> So you build and then it's like so chaotic and overwhelming and you're like, ha, how do I deal with this? And I'm like, that, that's the feeling. That's the feeling that I that we feel in life sometimes when you're just like, this happened. Because it's just one thing after the other. When, when something goes wrong, it's always like three things tend to go wrong at once, right? Like yep. One after the other after the other. And you're just like, what's happening? <laughs> that's the feeling that I was trying to convey in this song. Of like, it just, awesome. First it was hard and I didn't want to be there. But then it got worse and worse and worse and worse until, you know, I'm just going crazy. <laughs> and then it all stops. Yep. And it's like, I realized... If there is one writing with me and it's my reference to God and, and like, oh, I'm not doing this alone. Oh, there's nice. somebody with me. Oh, this is insanity. But there's someone who understands. And so that's my last plug for my, <laughs> for my other it. one. And it's, it's exciting. I, I love writing music. I love putting, you know, the, the chaos that is life into, you know, shrinking it down into this artsy form that's, palatable in a few minutes yeah yeah love it no that's awesome so uh we're gonna go ahead and wrap up and i'm gonna i gotta go listen to some music now i got, <laughs> I got five new tracks i gotta throw out there um and i i want to listen to them you got me excited for them i'm gonna awesome. share them with my wife we're uh we're at home right now with kids are all <laughs> cool so i'm gonna go play them that for is, her that is the best time to do podcast interviews right <laughs> oh, yeah. you have to worry about dad dad you the Yep, I'm here. Yep, <laughs> my kids constantly. Yep. So, Yay for school. <laughs> yeah. Like, we got lucky there's uh there's snow today, but it was wasn't heavy enough and wet enough to close down or cancel out. So kids are <laughs> all at school, so I'm good there. They but seem before to just we, yeah. throw us under the bus here, like, oh, there's there's two feet of snow. That's all right, you're good. Just come <laughs> to school. Oh, uh, there is I'm gonna share one more thing with you. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'm going to share that with you. I'm going to share something with you privately, and I'll cut all this out of uh, post-production. <laughs> no worries. Um, that Mariana's Trench, they actually have an acapella version. Of, it was for their encore at one of their concerts. They finished the song. Um, it was Good to You. It was one of their songs. And then they cut all, cut everything out. They said, everyone needs to be really quiet. Don't sing along. Mm -hmm. And they did an acapella version. It's four guys. And these are all... The one guy's got long, shaggy, bleached hair. I was, half his hair is bleached, half is dyed blue. Um, one's got a mohawk. One's got mutton chops. Like they're like a rock group, right? Yeah, and, art, art just isn't in the music. It's also in our appearance. It's also in every part of us. Oh, for sure. And they so they sing this uh, this song. Um, is, is it Billy Joel? And so it goes. But they do a four-piece male acapella cover of so, "And So It Goes." And I want to say they have just a handheld mic that's on. Yeah, there's a handheld mic that's on a stand that's like, you know, it's not it's on a boom mic. It's nothing. It's, it's a handheld mic just to pick up a little bit more. But they just they crushed it. Yeah, yeah. it's on. But I'm excited to look at these groups. I wrote them all down. Yeah, perfect. Um, so we are going to wrap it up. And I want you to go ahead, plug everything you got. Um, where, where can we find you? Where can we listen to you? Where can we get more Kara Lee Garrison? Because... Until that album comes out, all I got is five songs and a Christmas album. So lay it on us. Where can we get you? All right. Well, let's see. I'm everywhere. Carolee Garrison at CarolyGarrison.com. You can find my podcast. It's called Seeking Sunshine, and that's everywhere that you listen to podcasts. And I always put, actually, uh, if you want to listen to any of the other songs that are on my album, they're actually all played. Like, I play them. Um, at the end of my podcast episodes so the ones that haven't come out yet they're just randomly like thrown in at the end and again they're all going to be updated and be like so much better which i'm i'm just thrilled for uh but yeah i'm carly garrison music on instagram and i have a carly garrison music facebook page and that's me my name is hard to spell so it's pretty easy to find me nice <laughs> it makes it it's, it's one of those unique uh features that you don't have to look too hard to just spell the name right <laughs> Although what's what's really funny is there is an artist named Kara Lee with the same spelling as me, which is why I have to go by Carolee Garrison everywhere. Gotcha. 
<laughs> That's a little added touch. So it makes it more personal. It's easier to connect, right? Yeah. Awesome. So, Carly, thank you so much for jumping on. I am going to plug you everywhere because I think your stories, your, your music, everything you talked about, it got me hyped. It got me excited to go listen to your track. So uh, I'm going to go do that right now. Um, make sure everyone you guys check out Carly Garrison. Go on her website. Check out her podcast. Listen to her music. Let's let's blow her up big. <laughs> thank you so much. This was a joy. Thank you. Until next time, we will see everyone later. This episode of Randrews Live, the podcast. We hope you had as much fun listening as we did making it. Thanks for tuning in on this journey through the music and stories. Don't forget to hit subscribe and find us on all social media platforms at Randrews Live. From there, you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. And if you have any comments, questions, or ideas for future episodes, hit us up. We love hearing from our listeners. Until Until next time, time, keep keep on on rocking, and we'll we'll see see you soon. soon.